Good evening, folks. Hey, I've got a uh, question that's been rattling around in my mind for the past few days. Uh, those who watch the channel probably know that I follow Dr. Jordan Peterson uh, pretty closely, and I have a great deal of respect for him. I think he's one of the finest minds of our time. Uh, I happened to uh, be listening to a lecture, which I had heard before, uh, but I happened to be listening to one of those mashups where they where, where they put they string some things together. And he asked a question. Actually, he was asked a question. He said, uh, someone asked him, do you believe in God? And where he was talking about being asked the question, uh, do you believe in God? And first he said, and he always says this, first he says, I don't like that question. Uh, it doesn't really explain why. But he goes on to say, who am I to say that I believe in God given everything that's going on in my life, given all of the perfection, imperfection and the rot and the sin and the, you know, wickedness that is in his life. And this is him answering the question. How is it? That's a, he, he says it's a big, big step, almost an arrogant statement to say that I believe in God, that I follow God, that I'm a uh, follower of Jesus of Christ. And I've been thinking about that for a couple days. And so I thought I I probably ought to do a video on it that some other folks might get some value out of out of it. Of course, Jordan Peter I would love to have a conversation with Jordan Peterson on this and many other subjects. He's never going to see this. He doesn't know who, I, know who I am. And compared to Dr. Peterson, I have got the IQ of a you know, overcooked rutabaga. Uh, nevertheless, I think I might have an answer to his question when he says, who am I to say that I believe in God given everything in my life? Who am I? I think where Dr. Peterson is coming from, or alluding to at least, is what James says in the New Testament. When he says that <clears throat> faith without works is dead. That the, the good works uh, are evidence of your faith. Now, I think what Dr. Peterson may be thinking here when he asks this question, and, and it is heartfelt. I tell you what, it's actually very touching to see him struggle. He is obviously struggling mightily with this question as he answers it and often is brought to tears um, over the profoundness and the seriousness of this question. But James says that faith without works is dead. I think what Dr. Peterson might be thinking is that in order to get to the point where I can have faith, I must have my life cleaned up. I must have these good works. My, my life must, must look a certain way before I am able to say that I have faith. At least he's alluding to that. And what I would say is that, well, James, we're talking about James. James says that the good works, your life being more cleaned up at least, is evidence of your faith. And so the faith comes first. So that's the first thing I would want to discuss with Dr. Dr. Peterson is, hey, hold on a second. God doesn't expect you to have your life all cleaned up before you accept um the person of Jesus as a savior in order to come before God. Jesus really changed the game in the New Testament. He said, if you've hated a man, you're guilty of murder. If you've lusted after a woman, uh, you're guilty of adultery. And so he took the, uh, I've got mosquitoes in my room. He, he took the old law out of the physical realm, 
out of what we can see and touch and hear and observe into the spiritual and the psychological realm. So that if you think it, you were never, you're guilty, even though you didn't actually do the thing, whether it be murder or lust or the host of other things you might do, that even if you think it, you are guilty of it, which necessitates the concept that no man can come to the Father unless it's through the Son, the, the Savior. And then the Bible goes on to further in the New Testament to say that uh, no man can come to the Father, or, or no man can come to the Son unless the Father draw him. But Dr. Peterson is obviously really, really struggling with a lot of things, and he's an incredibly intelligent man, and his insight into the Bible is 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 astounding. It really is. I highly recommend his biblical series where he goes through uh, the old the Old Testament a book at a time, and boy, I'm here to tell you, he draws some stuff out that I've never heard anyone draw out before. I've, I've read a lot, and I've listened to a lot, and you know, sat in the pew while many preachers spoke. Uh, and, and I don't think I've ever heard anyone uh, take the approach that he does. So he is, he is very much, very serious about this. And so I'm kind of taking it. And so I took it serious. And I, I, and I, I began to really think about this thing. Now, I think when Jordan, Jordan I thought about how... how would Jesus answer it? So when, when Jordan Peterson asks, who am I to say that I believe in God given everything, all the sin and rot and nastiness that's in my life, who am I to say that I believe in God? I think Jesus might say, who are you to invalidate my sacrifice? I died for the sins of the world for all time, for everyone, all of mankind, for everyone past, present, and future. Why are you invalidating my sacrifice that say, by saying that you've got to, you know, that, that people have to somehow have themselves cleaned up before they can come to me, Jesus? So I, I, I understand the academic um, struggle that's going on. I, I think my message to Dr. Peterson and, and whoever else might be asking a similar question is that God does not expect you to have your life all in order and cleaned up. God does not require that. God only requires that we believe in the person of Jesus and that we accept his craft, his sacrifice for our sin, for all of our iniquity in order to Jesus is, in order to be pure in front of the Father, Jesus is the lens through which God views us, his, cre his imperfect creation, his fallen creation. Can you guys see that, that bug flying around me? It's driving me nuts. I'm not sure why he picked now to, to assault me. And there's something else I think Jesus might say. Jesus might, when, 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 when Dr. Peterson asks, who am I to believe in God? He's accusing himself. Look at all this, look at all this iniquity in my life. He's accusing himself, which is the role of the devil. The role of Satan is the accuser. But I think Jesus, Jesus might do something like what he did in uh, the New Testament, in the story of the prostitute, who is... The Pharisee uh, bring her before Jesus because they're trying to, to trap him. They're trying to catch him in some sort of blasphemous statement or some sort of unsound teaching because they're trying to discredit him, of course. And uh, they bring, they bring this, this lady uh, before him and they say, this is a prostitute. She was caught in the act. The law says that we're supposed to stone her. What do you say? And... Uh, the story goes that Jesus knelt down and he drew something in the sand. And he looked back up and said, 
let the person without any sin cast the first stone. And then the story goes on to say, well, the Pharisee were amazed, disarmed, and the crowd dissolved. And the woman was left there. And Jesus said to the woman, go and sin no more. And I think that's how Jesus would answer this question that Jordan Peterson has. I think Jesus would say, I don't care about, I don't care about the iniquity in your life, the wickedness, the whatever you got going on. I don't care about that. I've covered it. I paid the bill. And I think Jesus would say, I got you. Go and sin no more. And that's my message for this evening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to subscribe and see what else we've got going on here at this channel, uh, please subscribe. Uh, we put out some good content from time to time uh, when I have something that I think is important to say or when I, I see uh, a gap where nobody's talking about something that I think they ought to be talking about. So thank you for coming by. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of it. See all of you later.